What if creating an equal society was asking the right questions? What if the answers lay inward and the solution was holding ourselves to account, showing up authentically and creating collective understanding? My name is Orla McKeating and I am a person of privilege. And the word privilege can trigger various thoughts or emotions. Maybe we're afraid of saying the wrong thing. Maybe we want to avoid the saviour mentality. Or maybe we just don't understand it. But stay with me. It's a really powerful word. And in my opinion, it's a verb. Privilege is a right, advantage or immunity granted to a specific person or group. It can include race, gender, sexual orientation, religion, socioeconomic status, language or ability. And I have benefited from many privileges in my life. My journey to being aware and accepting my privilege has been a long and challenging one. In 2012, I welcomed my beautiful son, Elliot, into the world. A mix of ethnicity, identity, Belgian, Northern Irish, Congolese, Irish, a whole human. And raising a black child in a very white Northern Ireland has an invisible load, one which I became aware of very early in his life, convincing him and the world of his worth, teaching him how to respond to racism while protecting his innocence and worrying that he might be seen as a threat while empowering him to break stereotypes. Last month was UK Black History Month. And as usual, I emailed the school to see what they were doing. And for the first time ever, they responded. They were doing something. So we offered to send in some books that were relevant for Black History Month and for every month, and Elliot got to work. He gathered 33 books written by black authors about black experiences and sent them in for every person in his class, his teachers and his classroom assistants. And seeing him feeling so empowered by simply being seen, heard and valued humbled me and reminded me of my privilege and what I'd taken for granted for so long. But it also gave me hope hope at how much we're progressing. And if we don't have hope and we don't take action, then what's the point? In taking action, let's look at the three pillars of privilege. How we can start our journey of leaving a legacy, one that we won't experience in our lifetime, but laying the foundations for our children's children in years to come. It's not up to marginalised groups or those who have experienced oppression to educate us. So if we want change, and the world really needs change right now, then it's time to get to work. Number one, awareness. I've been through some tough times in my life. I grew up in Belfast, Northern Ireland, during the Troubles. I have been referred to many mental health specialists for most of my life. I'm a single mother, I have high functioning depression and anxiety, and last year I experienced a miscarriage that almost killed me. I've experienced really hard times and challenges, and having privilege does not take away from that, but it does mean that I have access to certain assets that not everyone has access to. I'm a white, able-bodied, cisgendered, straight woman, and that simply means that I have less barriers. So when we think about privilege, let's reflect on the following statements. I have never been denied an opportunity or disrespected because of my skin color. I mostly have access to a public bathroom that's aligned with my gender. I have rarely been the only person of my race in a room. I can assume that most people won't think I'm incompetent or helpless because of the way I look. I have never been asked to define my sexual orientation or my gender to anyone. I don't avoid places for fear of sexual harassment. 
And I'm fairly comfortable sharing the gender of my spouse or partner to anyone who asks. What if we become aware of our assets and how much are we willing to lose to use our privilege for good? Number two, acceptance. Accepting that every feeling, emotion and situation is valid and actually we have nothing to lose in using our privilege for better. In fact, we have plenty to gain. In moving towards a more inclusive society, we're improving mental health because it allows all people to feel more connected and valued. We're strengthening relationships and emotional well-being and we're deepening tolerance and acceptance of others. And it allows us to raise happy, balanced and curious children. When we think about the challenges that come with talking about privilege, Jazz Sethi gathered data on the perceptions of privilege and he discovered that the reactions and the results were similar to the five stages of grief. Anger. I'm not racist, I have a black friend. Denial. You cannot say that. The Irish are the most oppressed ever. Bargaining. My life has been way too hard for me to have privilege. Guilt. Oh my goodness, how have I not seen this my whole life? What's wrong with me? And acceptance. So what if we stand by marginalised groups and move together to create a society where all voices matter? Where all people have equal access to safety, rights, food, education and healthcare, and where the people making the big decisions are the ones with lived experience in the matter. What if we accept our privilege without guilt or fragility? What might that look like? Number three, allyship. Allyship is actively and consistently supporting or advocating for marginalised or underrepresented people. That can look like getting curious, having difficult conversations, being willing to say or do the wrong thing and stand corrected, continuing to learn, unlearn, speak up and take action on norms, inequalities or topics to inspire change. Last year, I had the privilege of being part of an amazingly diverse cohort from people all over the UK who were making huge change globally. And they were so willing to show up so vulnerably and share their challenges and struggles and parts of them that the world had dismissed, that the world chose not to see. And I spent a number of weeks with a good friend who began to lose her sight as a teenager and is now almost blind. And she was so honest about sharing how her life is different not being able to see. The things I take for granted, like getting up in the morning and going straight for a run, knowing who's speaking on a Zoom or Teams call, navigating a new city independently, seeing the sunrise and the sunset and the faces of those I love, and her ability to show up and live her life so fully really changed the way I see the world. It inspired me to really accept and be aware of my privilege, to try and practice allyship every day and continue to try to influence the people around me to move towards creating a world where we have equal rights for all and we're building bridges. Her never ending commitment to sharing her story, to allow people to thrive, to remove isolation and to create communities inspired me to do better. Charlotte was visually disabled, but she enabled me to see. You don't need a friend with a disability or a black child to do the work. Privilege isn't what you've been through, it's what you haven't been through. It's saying, I see you, I hear you, and I stand with your pain in words and in actions. It's humility. It's love. What questions will you ask yourself today about privileges that you may have afforded? 
And I'm going to leave you with the words of the brilliant Amanda Gorman. But there is always light. If only you're brave enough to see it. If only you're brave enough to be it. <laughs>